This tutorial demonstrates how to use Forest Pack Pro's Tint Override and Color by Map features to create the appearance of a football pitch with painted markings. This approach to texturing forest objects is useful where it's necessary to colorize individual scatter objects. For another example, it might be particularly useful in creating patterned rugs or carpets. The setup is fairly straightforward. There's a plane to be used as a scatter area, a clump of grass geometry, and a single bitmap used to colorize all the grass and add the markings. This scene and all the assets necessary to follow this tutorial can be downloaded from i2soft's website. The first step is to create a new forest object. So go to Create, Geometry, and then pick i2 software, Forest Pro, and simply select the plane from the scene. This will automatically use it as a surface. If we now go to Modify, we want to change the scatter geometry from the default, which is a plane, to our clump of grass. So from the geometry list, pick the default object, come down to properties and turn on custom object. Click on none and pick grass clump small from the scene. Now this clump of grass is actually still a little bit too large to get the kind of definition on the paint that we'd like. Because each geometry item that's used takes on only a single color, we can't tint each individual blade of grass using this technique. The smaller these are, the better the definition is you're going to get around the paint lines. If you look at these two examples, you can see the difference between this one, which uses a much larger clump, and this one, which uses one that's much smaller. To shrink this further, I'm simply going to change the global scale here to 60%. The second thing I'd like to do before I start moving things around in the distribution map is to add a second area, just temporarily, while I set this up. So I'm just gonna add this rectangular spline here to constrain the segments inside its borders. That way the density can be adjusted without Forest automatically hiding some of the objects to keep viewport performance fast. Later on, we can turn this off and go back to the full scene. So for now, come to the surface area and turn that off, and then the rectangle is on, and it will only be inside this area. Let's come down to distribution map. We want the distribution to be very dense since we're trying to cover this whole field in grass. Uh, so we'll change it from spread to full. As you can see, the distance between the clumps is too large. So if you bring the density units down, we want to get them so that it's nice and close together. And about eight meters is good. Next we'll go to transform. Because the full distribution map type gives you a kind of grid-like structure, we'll turn on translation, rotation, and scale to break that up. Uh, before we do that, let's have a quick look at the before and after. So this is before we've added any transforms. As you can see, it's fairly regular. Now we'll add them. So turn on translation. We'll add rotation too, and accept the defaults in both. And then scale will enable. But this time we want to separate the X, Y, and Z axis. So let's uh, turn none on under lock aspect ratio. We don't really want these to get smaller in case gaps start to appear. So the minimum will be 120, 100, and the maximum 120 for the X and the Y. And then for the Z, I want to up the maximum so that we've got some taller clumps of grass, especially since we've shrunk them down by 60%. So we've got 100 to 250 on the Z axis. The others are the same. Now if we do a quick render, we should get something slightly more natural. Okay, so that looks a bit nicer. Okay. Now that the forest object is set up, it's time to look at the material. So bring up the material editor, and in the scene materials you should see a field which is already applied to the plane, copy that in as an instance, and a grass material which is what's already on the grass. Let's just turn this on in the viewport so we can see a little better what's going on. This is a simple V-ray material with some soft reflection. We want to add a forest color map to the diffuse slot and control the color of each of these clumps using this bitmap here. So let's create in a diffuse map slot a new forest color material. It's in the standard section, forest color. Just double click on that. 
Forest Color allows you to randomize between bitmaps to pick colors from a gradient, but it also allows you to get color from a map, and that's what we're going to use in this case. So we're going to override the tint, in fact we don't need anything up here, the colors are coming entirely from the map. We don't want to get the color from the gradient, get color from map, and this bitmap here is what we're going to use as an instance. Now if I were to render this now, it wouldn't be quite the effect we we're expecting. So there are a couple of things. At the moment, each clump is getting a color which is randomly selected from a pixel on that map because random values is turned on here. We want this to be as textures on surface so that it aligns to the way the texture has been applied to the field surface. And the other thing we want to do is to change the blending mode. At the moment the blending mode is set to color, which means it's blending it with the white up here, which is why the colors were so light. In this case we want the color to come solely from the map. So we just change the blending mode here to normal. Now if we render, you can see the color is being picked up from the texture below. If we now close this down, close this, and from our forest object go back to areas, turn off the rectangular area and turn back on the surface, now do a quick render, you can see the finished effect. While this is rendering I'll just mention if you'd like to know more about forest colour then, then please see the Autumn and Parks tutorial and scene or check out the forest colour reference on i2soft.com